My name is John McKeon. I'm the moderator for the Teradata River, and today we have with us Jenny Freshwater, who's the director of BI for Real Networks. Hi, Jenny. Hi, John. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Real Networks is an amazing company, actually. They're, they're one of the largest internet streaming companies around, and they do games, media, music, and videos. And basically, they deliver whatever the customer wants in, in whatever form they want. Now, that's a huge statement, and that probably requires a lot of data. How, how does dealing with all those different type of products and all those different customers, what's the biggest challenges and opportunities around using that much data? Well, I think one of our biggest challenges is that our BI organization is trying to build an enterprise data warehouse. And as you mentioned, we have uh, primarily three very distinct businesses in games, music, and video, all of which are internet-based, which means they require a great deal of data to be able to understand the customer and, um, and glean business value. And for us, we have to be able to integrate those three different verticals into one enterprise data warehouse. And we do that uh, on our Teradata platforms. Now that, that's, you said a lot, and that takes a lot of work. How do you integrate all that stuff, particularly when you throw web analytics at this data? What, what are the challenges and what's the value that comes out of really putting advanced analytics against this and putting it into the warehouse? Well, the beauty of our businesses and the, other, and the thing that makes them difficult is the fact that underlying all of our consumer businesses is a consumer. So we have data in our, in our environment that allows us to understand the consumer. Um, historically, we've had um, mostly e-commerce data, um, content data that allows us to understand what the consumer is doing actually once they make that, tran that transaction or they click stream on, uh, on one of our music sites. Uh, what we haven't had is the ability to integrate that user behavior that's so rich and intrinsic within the e-commerce environment with what's actually going on on the web. Uh, we use Omniture for web analytics and historically we've been able to understand in nearly real time if uh, what is actually going on uh, in aggregate through web analytics. Um, one of the projects that I'm actually most excited about um, and I think our business is most excited about is our ability to take that data from Omniture at a user level, ingest it into our Teradata environment and be able to now tie that a specific user clicked on let's say four different pages on the web, then ended up buying something from Real Networks, we can then understand the lifetime value and the lifetime profitability of that subscriber all the way from their first click on a Real Networks property through when they hopefully stay with us and are a valuable, loyal customer. Wow, that's, that's amazing. It, it, the other, the other um, complication or the other level of uh, sophistication is also um, when you're doing streaming video, streaming music, there, there's got to be loyalties paid. Um, what, what are the challenges around that, and how do you use BI and web analytics to, to actually address that, that challenge? I would say royalties is our biggest operational challenge as a business intelligence group. Um, and it, at times it seems like that, that, that royalties and business intelligence don't, don't really mix. Royalties is a very operational type of, uh, of an application for a, a data warehouse. But when you look at specifically music, games, and video, um, the data that is required to be able to calculate the very complex uh, royalty calculations, there's only one place in our environment that actually contains all that data, and that's our enterprise data warehouse. We've tried multiple times and, and failed to actually go to third parties and, um, and try to integrate store-bought royalty systems. Um, at the beginning of this year, we decided that we tried and failed enough and that we were, uh, we were going to build it on top of our data warehouse and we've ingested all of the data that's required to pay royalties. We've built a fully operational um, system, including a user interface, to, so that finance or accounting can initiate um, their monthly royalties, as well as fully SOX compliant to allow us you know, to, to be uh, in compliance with the regulation. And we use literally almost every piece of data within our, our warehouse to be able to pay our partners. Well, Jenny, what happens? Um, this must be a tremendous amount of data. What happens when you reach kind of the the, the capacity? What have you done to gone be, go beyond um, the capacity of your system and, and, and um, 
go into new areas of segmenting your environment? Well, we found ourselves at the end of last year in, in this, this, with this exact problem. We wanted to introduce web analytics, um, but to bring in web analytic data at a user level is an enormous data set, particularly when you're operating as many sites as Real Networks is. Um, we wanted to build a royalty system, but it requires that we have detailed streaming and video usage data all the way back through our history. And at the end of last year, we were at a place where we were running out of space on our Teradata Enterprise class system. And uh, going into 2009, uh, we didn't have the funds uh, available to be able to upgrade that system. So we looked at, uh, at our next, next best option, which uh, was actually the, the data appliance, the, the Teradata 1550. So at the beginning of this year, we, we brought the 1550 into our, um, into our enterprise architecture and we actually run our large data volume applications against our 1550. That includes our royalty system, as well as the detailed data for our web analytics system. We really use both boxes uh, simultaneously. We bring in that very detailed data, we aggregate it, we then put it into our enterprise class uh, system to allow reports to easily access that data. But for data mining activities, we still hit, um, we still hit the, the data appliance. The other thing that that appliance has allowed us to do is, is to uh, break our environments. We used to only have a production and an integration environment. Now we've been able to take that large 50 terabyte system and segregate it logically into different environments. It allows us to go from development in a single threaded fashion, where you have one ETL or two ETL projects going at once, to where now, for better or worse, we have five to six ETL projects going at any given time because of the environments we've been able to create on the 1550. That's really interesting. Jenny, what do you think the biggest ahas have been when you've been able to bring that in and look at that data and segregate the environment? You know, it's really amazing to, uh, to go from reporting to being able to understand the customer. Um, with data as rich as we have at Real Networks, um, you would be amazed at the amount of findings that you can get by just actually looking at data on a customer level. And this goes all the way from acquisition through the life cycle of the customer to the churn event and even the cost perspective now that we have royalties in. Um, for example, some of the, the analysis that we've been able to do now that we've never been able to do before because we didn't have the space is really looking at our, at our loyal customers and understanding what makes them loyal customers, specifically in the music space. And uh, I won't give away the whole model, but one of the interesting things that we found is people that listen to music on Tuesdays are, are more loyal customers. And it, it took really looking at that data to understand it. Then we realized the reason is that new music comes out on Tuesdays. People that are waiting for the new music end up being more loyal customers. Um, and that's something we would have never been able to determine if we hadn't have been able to look at, at customer behavior all the way from uh, the beginning to the end of the life cycle. Really interesting. Now, what about um, enhancing the customer experience? What, how do you, do you use data to actually improve their experience as a customer? Well, I think this, this is when it comes full circle. When BI becomes uh, not just a, a part of of you know, a company that allows you to report what did happen. Um, and, and, and to be honest, Real Networks is still in this transition phase between being able to report and being able to predict. Um, 2009 has been uh, when we've taken, I would say we've gone from, uh, from doing nothing at all to taking a baby step. Um, from this point into the future, we truly want to be able to take our learnings that we've gained this year and push those out into our uh, front end systems so that our customer service representatives are able to use the data that we have internally to understand loyalty and be able to affect our customers, to give them great offers if we see a great customer that's about to leave us. Jenny Freshwater, thank you very much. Director of BI at Real Networks, it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you.